call to order this is uh, February Scott County School Board meeting. And uh, we're going to stand for a moment of silence and uh, talk about the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs>
fifth district. We have Mr. Connell. And from the sixth district, we have Mr. Hood. Thank you. Thank you again. Let's give these gentlemen and lady a round of applause, please. We also have a recognition, a recognition rather, and the week of February 14th and 18th has been designated our school board clerk and deputy clerk appreciation week. <coughs> I'm very grateful to these ladies because they keep a record of the business and what transpires at our school board meetings, not for present but also future use whenever the folks will go back and, and if they want to look at what the school board actually did at each of the meetings. So I want to recognize our clerk, Ms. Kim Henderson, and our deputy clerk, Sherry Christian. Thank you. In your package, you will find an agreement with the Appalachian Volleyball Officials Association. This is for three years. And this was sent to me, which I shared with each of you. It does provide the <coughs> rates uh, of the game assignment, whether it's varsity, junior varsity, or middle school. And unless there's any particular questions, I ask your approval of the agreement as presented. Make that motion. Motion from Mr. Sally. Second. And a second from Mr. McConnell. All in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. The next item we have is amendment to the 2021-22 school operating budget. Uh, you will see on the cover letter there we have made many applications for various things, whether it's through SR3 funds, 21st century, <coughs> and school security grants. You will see on that cover sheet there the date in which we were informed that we were recipients of the grant and the amount and of course a brief description of the particular grant itself. And like all the other grant monies that we receive, uh, we can only get reimbursement when we spend uh, these out. So, Again, these do operate are entirely all grant monies. These are not upfront monies as some may speculate. And these are for various programs. And if you notice the last, and we were waiting on it, it's usually announced well before now, but the school security grant, uh, we weren't notified till the end of December. But in all of these grants, it totaled about $1,379,690. So that has been factored into the amended budget on the expenditure revenue as well as the expenditure in. Does anyone have any particular questions in regards uh, to the amendments made within the budget? If not, I ask your approval of the Amendments to the 2021-22 school operating budget as presented. Make a vote. Second. And a motion from Mr. McConnell. Second from Mr. Sally. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. The next item we have is uh, Scott County Public Schools School Nutrition Safety Plan. Ms. Frazier shared this with me. It is a large document. And she said that we need to have this in place or updated. And unless there's any particular questions in regards to this plan, I ask your approval as presented. I make a motion. A motion for Mr. Housrock. A second for Mr. McConnell. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. The next item we have, uh, we were just notified of this uh, not too long ago, uh, it is the American Rescue Plan Act, it's the Coronavirus State and Local Fiscal Recovery Fund.
this announcement. Uh, we've often referred to it as the governor's HVAC grant application. And if you look through the documentation uh, here, it does list the projects that we would like to begin work on just as soon as possible. Uh, these will probably, for the most part, will begin during next fiscal year. But I wanted to share that with you, that we were approved uh, for 500, excuse me, $684,509. Of course, we have to match that as well, and we will use funds that we've had to take away from some of our ESSER two and ESSER three monies. We'll have to make some adjustment to meet that local match. But Mr. Sally is with us tonight. If you have any particular questions in regards to some of the projects that we would like to work on uh, for the upcoming school year. This, this is like the other grants. We put the money up and we get it back as we spend it. Yes, sir. So you might spend 1.3 or whatever, just be the 600 or something, right? We will, in essence, have to spend out not only this money, but money from the previous two grants. So in essence, we'll get every bit of it back, yes. We'll have to put the money up front, but we will be able to receive it back. You can take up to what year was it, 2024 or something like that on this? Yes, sir. Yes, that, this was the one I went and asked the Board of Supervisors if they would help us out. I said no. I didn't get any any response. Yay yeah, or nay. All right. Just kind of went away. So we'll take that over other money, right? Yes, sir. We're having to balance this with other ESSER two and three funds to get that match. Uh, Ron, hey, how much uh, what kind of efficiency do gas brawlers have compared to coal? And is it what's the difference in the in the price of using coal versus gas and everything? Or where are we headed with that? Because let's see where we're changing out a couple of those. Uh, I, I don't have any exact figures on that. Uh, the best reference that I have for that is when we did the performance contracting project, which started back in 2014. And at that time, we was using coal at Dungannon Intermediate School, and we switched to LP gas there at Dungannon. And there was just, at that time, we was averaging in the range of $5,500 a year at Dungannon on our coal usage. Yeah. And in the beginning of that, uh, at that time, we ran about another $1,000 a year in LP gas. But gas is going up, right? I mean, it, it is, yeah. and coal is going up too. I know, but that's what I, I wonder. Yeah. Because I see we're replacing all that. But, you know, this year was a year that we, uh, we had a hard time getting coal. We, we actually went through, uh, well, we went to a third person to be able to get coal. The first two ended up canceling out and couldn't supply our coal order. And uh, so that's becoming harder to get. And uh, with what we're looking at on some of the future projects there, uh, those systems, of course, will take us away from the use of coal in some of our schools. And I have uh, about five jobs there that I'm prioritizing that I've discussed with Mr. Ferguson. And if we get those jobs in, then that'll eliminate four schools, uh, four coal usage schools there. Uh, the other three that we have is gonna be quite a challenge to move over to another you know, product, but in the long run, it's probably what to be where we're headed at because of if coal keeps going where it's at right now. <laughs> so we, we still have seven buildings that use coal? Yes, sir. Got three of them that are steam, and that's one of the reasons that they're a little bit more of a challenge. Uh, and just because of uh, the systems where you can't necessarily convert as easily there. So the schools that we've targeted to get rid of first is some of the oldest buildings uh, as far as the hot water usage and 
because of your descaling and stuff like that on the interior side of the piping and everything, deterioration of the piping, that's one of the reasons that I've chose to go that direction first. And then also uh, the cost. The cost is going to be a lot greater on the, the other schools. And you save on getting rid of the ash and all that too, right? Is that a lot of Well, expense? that's been another challenge for this year with our uh, with Bristol landfill going through what they've been through. And at this time, uh, I don't have a place for that at this time, uh, but that's something that I've got to get in working with the Department of Environmental Quality to see what my options will be in that. We're storing them on school sites now. Storing ash on school sites? Correct, yeah. We've always done that as a temporary movement before we get them missing. But that'll be some more cost you don't have to Correct. go to gas you won't have to repair that cost and trying to store it somewhere and all that. And pay and have it hauled off to yeah. the And what we had going with Bristol City Landfill was significantly cheaper than any of our other options whenever we went through that road in the beginning a few years ago. <laughs> significantly cheaper. So it's a uh, it's gonna be Pretty expensive this time. <laughs> yeah, they problems with it. Any other questions? Thank you, man. Right. No, on behalf of the maintenance department, I'd like to say thanks to every one of you for what you do and the support that you give to the school system and the maintenance department. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. Thank you, Robbie. In your package, you will see a <coughs> vaccination booster schedule for the Pfizer booster. And this will be available for students 12 years and older. Just want to provide that in there for you. And the schedule is presented there as well. Next item we have is approval of the Head Start Financial Report. This is a preliminary December 2021 uh, financial report. Unless there's any particular questions in regards to this, I ask your approval as presented. Thank you, Motion. Motion for Mr. Sally. Yes, Second for Mr. Hood. All in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. Opposed? Motion carried. Next item we have is the section criteria. This was approved by the Head Start Policy Council. Uh, enrollment criteria priorities uh, for students for the 2022-23 school year. Unless there's any particular questions in regards to this uh, document here, enrollment criteria document, I ask your approval as presented. Motion. Motion. Motion for Mr. McConnell. Second. Second for Mr. Houseright. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion no carried. The next item we have is for informational purposes. This is the Head Start Director's Report for January 2022. Does anyone have any questions in regards to the Director's Report? Next item we have is the Head Start COVID-19 Vaccination and Universal Masking Policy. Unless there's any particular questions in regards to this document, I ask you to approve what's presented. Is that mask still in? Uh, <coughs> even with the governor, what the governor has recommended, is it still in or not? They, they tend to follow more of the federal guidelines because it is a federal program. This would technically the federal program takes precedence over the governor's order. So Head Start has to abide by what's sent down from Philadelphia, their local office. I want to emphasize that real hard when they start rolling. But it will really change pretty soon, though, I've been thinking. I don't know if it will or not. Again, this is for Head Start. I'll make a motion. Motion for Mr. Sally. 
I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. And the last item I have, we just received this, inf this information here in regards to the ESSA 3 American Rescue Plan Act. Uh, these were originally established to set aside funds which addresses unfinished learning before and after school programs or summer programs. We did make application for this. In the initial application, we, we kind of asked for everything. But in, in reality, we were approved for $513,130 and eight cents. I just wanted to share that with you in addition to all the other grants that we had made applications for. Does anyone have any particular questions in regards to this? last announcement here. I'd like to say uh, that, uh, I mean, I guess before I got on the board, uh, a lot of people was telling me you need to apply for all these. And uh, I keep seeing this more and more. Not be pushed on us, but we do fill it out and we do get rewarded for it and I appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Tim. These grants Kind of one in a one in a lifetime, I guess, experience. But we have we have tried. Go ahead, Mr. Chairman, member of the board. This is all all that I have. Thank you. All right. Uh, my understanding, we need to go into a closed meeting. Yes, I move we enter into closed meeting to discuss candidates for employment and assignment, performance of teachers, teaching assistants, coaches, nurses, custodians, and resource school resource officers as provided section 2.2-3711A1 of the Code of Virginia as amended. Got a motion to second, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried, one chair for